This is a crayfish and I'm going to turn it into bronze. So a while back one of my viewers saw me do some of my organics castings. I've made castings of things like scorpions, spiders, grasshoppers, crickets, things like that. And one of my viewers with the channel Muskrat Outdoors, I'll have a link to his channel below. He was inspired to do some of his own castings and he tried to cast a crawdad or crayfish as I call it. Didn't really work out the best for him. So today I'm going to take my own crayfish and see if I can find a better way to do it. I just happen to have had a frozen crayfish in my freezer. It's been there for a few years because you always have to be ready. You ready? For what? So let's see if we can bronze a crayfish. Now my first step is to make a base. So I took a past mold I made of a piece of sagebrush and filled it with wax. That'll give me a wax piece of wood to put the crayfish on. To give it a flat base, I take a piece of plate metal and heat it up on a burner. I rub the piece over it and that makes the bottom nice and flat. I then flatten a place for the crayfish to sit and try to attach it with molten wax. I use a soldering iron to make a puddle of wax and then press the crayfish into it. That'll keep it nice and secure for the rest of the sprewing. So the crayfish still had some water on it and that's not conducive to getting wax to stick. So I'll be more careful this time. I carve off pieces of wax wood and prop the claws up and then I'll go around sprewing all the claws and each leg. So this one will have a sprue at its chest, its claws, each leg, and the base of the tail. Where the wax is shiny and visible, I'll try to etch in some wood pattern. Then I'll attach the main sprue to the whole thing. So I have mine sprued up very much the same way he did, except I have a lot of my sprues disguised as a piece of wood. So when it's all said and done, it'll all be one sculpture. So where do you stand on the whole crayfish crawdad debate? Once all that's done, it's time to set the flask and pour the investment. Now one of the problems that he ran into was he used a can as a flask. And when you get something that thin at that high a temperature, it just oxidizes away. Now I'm going to be using a fancy perforated flask, but this isn't necessary. I've used pieces of square tubing or just old pieces of pipe. They won't last forever but they'll last several burnouts. Now he used plain plaster of Paris. It's not ideal for high temperature casting. I use Ultravest by Ransom and Randolph. It's made for this and it gives you a very high quality finish. But there are a lot of people that do use plaster of Paris. So I sprued up a second crayfish and I'm gonna use basic stuff. Plaster of Paris and old pipe. We'll see if I can get a good result. Some people ask why I mix the water first and then the powder. What difference does it make? Simply if I have a bunch of heavy powder on the bottom and then put the water on top, it can be hard to free up all the powder. Sometimes it sticks to the corners. Whereas if I have the water there and put the powder, there's a little water on the bottom, it's just easier to mix up, that's all. Now with the plaster of Paris, I'm also going to add sand. The sand will help it get porous. 
It'll help the moisture escape and it'll also make it easier to break up. Investment is very soft, porous. Plaster of Paris is very hard. So after casting, it's a lot harder to break open Plaster of Paris. Now with the investment, I have everything calculated ahead of time. I know exactly how much powder and water I need to use. But with this Plaster of Paris, it's all guesswork. I don't know how much sand, I don't know how much water, and I don't know how much powder to use. So we're gonna eyeball it. I never use mathematics or statistics or calculations or anything at all like that because I can't do it. So I just hope for the best. Plaster of Paris sets up really fast, so all you have time for is just to shake and tap some of the bubbles out. This is pretty experimental for me as well. Now all this wax and the crayfish has to burn out of here. Now my friend tells a story when he tried to get the wax out, he put it in his home oven. And that caused some problems, both in the kitchen and with his wife. Neither one of those things is good. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it that hopefully is a little less exciting. One of my favorite ways to remove the wax is by steaming. I know it works well with investment, but let's see if it works well with plaster. I take a tin like this. I don't know what it's called. It came with the pot. And when I put that in there, it lets the flask sit above the water line. So I put just a little bit of water in there, this in there, and then the flask goes on top. And I cook it just like a chicken. One hour, give or take, depending on how big the flask is, all the wax will be gone. Then I put it in my kiln. Another benefit of using this method is I can save all the wax and reuse it. Now these will go in the kiln and they have to heat up slowly. In the binding agent of the investment and the plaster is gypsum. And when you heat gypsum up, it emits water. That's one of the reasons why the plaster will crack. That's why you put the sand in there so it's more porous. Once this comes up to temperature, that water escapes and you don't want it to happen too fast. So slow heating is key. The investment is porous, so that handles that water escaping much, much better. Now it takes a long time for the crayfish or any organics to burn out because there's no oxygen in there. You remember the keys to combustion. You have to have oxygen, fuel, and something else. You need heat. But with no oxygen, you have to keep it in there for hours. I haven't done the test to see how long for each thing, but for me, this is an all day process. So it's usually in there about 10 hours and I know everything's gone. So when the crayfish is all burned out, there's gonna be a little bit of ash left behind. Now, I've been taking a little air hose and I've been blowing out the ash. But one of my viewers suggested I use a vacuum. I've never tried that. So I took a copper pipe, taped it to the end of the vacuum hose and I'll give it a try. The flask is still hot so I don't want the plastic to melt. Thus the copper. When I blow the ash out, I can see the ash come out of the hole. I couldn't see anything with this vacuum, so I don't know if this actually worked or not. Inconclusive. I also hit him with the air compressor, just to be sure. Now I use a kiln, but just thinking on alternative ways to do this, you could, in theory, put this in your wood stove overnight, and keep it at a high temperature, and that would essentially be the same for the burnout. So I intended to use my vacuum casting setup. And what I didn't realize is I had the wrong size opening in there. So when I tried to put the flask in, it wouldn't fit. So I went on to pour the small plaster flask by itself. I'll keep the bronze hot while I troubleshoot my vacuum chamber. But once I change the opening diameter, it's time to put it in and pour the metal.
Now with this style of casting, the air is drawn through the investment and the metal is pulled through all the little legs and all those small places. In theory. I'm going to quench the plaster to show the difference between investment. When I quench this plaster, it doesn't break up and dissolve away the same way the investment does. You can see the plaster is still there. It's also really important that you don't quench too soon. You can see this is an example of what happens when you quench when it's too hot. The water hits the metal inside, flashes to steam, and explodes. And whatever your casting was, won't be anymore. So when I quench the investment, I wait till I can still see a little color, but not so it's glowing too bright. The camera kind of shows different colorations, but you learn to get an eye for when it's time to quench. So with plaster, quenching isn't really that feasible anyway. And with investment, just be really careful that it's not too hot when you quench it. If it's too cold, it doesn't work. But if it's too hot, it's dangerous. And always wear a face shield just in case something does blow up. So I'll start chipping away the plaster. And one of the things the sand does is it makes it a lot easier to get the plaster off the piece. Kind of looks like a bronze crayfish fossil. Well, muskrat, that's about as good as I can get with plaster and no vacuum. Claws turned out pretty well, but none of the legs cast. Still pretty cool and something you could do with the equipment you have. Let's see if the vacuum casting worked any better. We can see that one turned out quite a bit better. Every leg is captured, the claws right down to the tips, the tail. Vacuum casting makes a big difference. Now you can duplicate the effect of vacuum casting by having a higher vertical spout. The higher you have vertical pressure, the more it forces the metal into little spaces like the legs. I cheat with the vacuum. I did not get the antennas this time, which with some of the insects I did, that kind of tells me the temperature of the metal might have been a little off. I think it was too cold. I think there was some residue and some ash left behind. It didn't quite turn out as well as I'd hoped. But let's get it polished up and look at it up close. Sandblasting is really the only way I've found to clean these intricate pieces. If anyone has a better way, let me know in the comments. Now I tried a vibrating tumbler, at first with walnut shells, and then I tried some coarser coal slag. It still missed a few spots of investment, so I had to hit it with the sandblaster again, and then I went on to polishing it up. By coating only the crayfish in protected clear, it'll keep that golden bronze color. And then when I patina it, the wood will turn dark and I'll get a nice color contrast between the two. And just a little bit more buffing and then we're done. I'd say it turned out pretty cool, but I wouldn't call it a clean casting. The surface finish is pretty rough. I think there was just a lot of residue or unburnt material left behind in the mold. Maybe the shell of the crayfish is just a lot more durable and needs more time to burn or I don't really know. The way to really do this cleanly would be to make a mold, 
and make a wax cast. Put the wax cast on there, then it would be perfect. With the one I did in plaster, I didn't do too much better than you did, Muskrat. You had the tail, I got a little more of the body and the claws, but no legs, and it's still a little rough. So you definitely had the right idea, but I think you just kind of picked a tough project to start with. Go ahead and check out Muskrat's video, Muskrat Outdoors, and if you do, tell him Lucas sent you. I'll post a link down below. Anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.